Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today's video we're going to talk about how to unclog your airbrush and how to prevent certain cloggings from happening and why they happened. Uh, this way you can get back on track and finish your artwork or the craft that you're working on and you don't get frustrated and uh, get discouraged. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we talk about uh, ways to unclog your airbrush, I just want to let you guys know that uh, you'll definitely end up getting a lot of clogs when you're airbrushing. Uh, there's no way around it. Uh, it's always going to happen. So the faster you uh, figure out or troubleshoot how to unclog your airbrush and uh, the quicker you'll uh, you know, get restarted on working on your project and uh, the less frustration you're going to have. So um, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and talk about um, a quick ways of uh, troubleshooting real quick. This way you can continue uh, airbrushing without stopping too much and trying to clean out uh, bigger clogs of paint. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pretend that the, the airbrush is clogged and uh, there's no paint coming out of here. And just a quick uh, overview of how the airbrush works. We have air coming in and it's getting pushed out through here and it's sucking and siphoning up paint through here. And it's combining and coming out through that tip. So um, let me show you how that happens real quick. Just an overview. Paint will come through here. Air will shoot through here and it'll combine in this little, this very little tiny uh, tip and it'll come out through here both. Well, actually the air will come out through the sides and the paint will come through the little hole. So there's a lot of possibilities of it getting clogged because it is so tiny in there. And that's the reason why that gets uh, clogged all the time so um, the fastest way to unclog would be to no matter what happens you don't know if the clog is here you don't know if it's in the center you don't know if it's in the cup you don't know if it's in the tip or you don't know if it's in the in the in the in the tip here or in the uh, straw siphon that's down here as well if you're using a cup you don't know if it's clogged down in the center down there or right here on the on the tip so there's a variety variety of different ways that the airbrush can get clogged and uh, if you're using like a gravity fed uh, you may you know end up getting some debris in there and that's why it's getting clogged so this is the way I kind of figure out or troubleshoot real quick there's nothing coming out let's say we have this guy in here and there's nothing coming out it's clogged somewhere so usually what I do is remove this paint and nothing's coming out right I usually have a bottle of like cleaner or whatever you're using to clean the uh, your airbrush. I put it on there and I tested it out. Usually that will definitely, you know, bring some of that liquid in there and push whatever is in there and try to clean it out. And you'll get it. If for whatever reason this doesn't work, that means there's a bigger clog in there. So usually I remove this and I take and push this back put my finger in there what th what that's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna put some of the air and it's gonna back fill it onto this siphon uh, uh, neck here and it's gonna push anything that's large back out see how I got some water down there so normally that with the amount of pressure that you have in there if it's decent enough of a clog that pressure will push anything that you have in there and then after that I'll come back in here you'll you'll see when there's stuff coming out usually I put this like a you know in a in a trash can or a, or a cup like this this way you don't have paint all over the place and I'll back it and after that put this back in here and you should be good to go so if that doesn't work 
That means there's uh, a different issue and there's a different clog coming in. So if it's if it's still not coming out, that means there's a bigger uh, clog in here and you have to utilize something large um, or something like an old needle or maybe a paper clip or something like that to try to fish out any big pieces that are in there. Usually that happens if um, the paint's really old or for some reason you forgot to close the lid on your paint and it dries around some of this uh, some of this paint will fall in there and make its way down into the cup or your uh, your bottle if it does you have to filter that out but normally with the you know paper clip or whatever you have handy you can dig out a big piece that's stuck in there if it's if it's too too clogged something else is happening and that's when you start getting frustrated so uh, the best way to do, go about doing that is taking this off Taking this off, pulling this back a little bit and see if there's any paint in there. There might be some big chunks in there. You can go in here with another paper clip and just pull it out real quick and reassemble it like that. You also, while you have this out, you want to make sure that there's no clog inside. And you can use that same paper clip or whatever you have to try to fish that stuff out or push it out. Right, clean that off, drop it in here. Push that back, lock it in, spray it out, and then use some cleaner after that to get it really nice and clean. Okay, you wanna be able to learn how to do that real quick. This way you don't get frustrated. Like I said, a lot of people get, uh, frustrated because it's always clogging and this and that that's always gonna happen and but if you're quick about it uh, you can continue on with your project and not even worry about it and you know it's part of the game so uh, that's the best way of unclogging your airbrush uh, and normally that's kind of like the same process that I do every single time I airbrush okay so if you've done that process and uh, you find out that it's not the airbrush that's clogged it's either your pain uh, holder a uh, little cup or your bottle here one of the two it has an issue of um, you know having some clogging in there so uh, first of all for this uh, cup if this is the only cup that you have um, and there's paint in there you know you can kind of dump the paint out and uh, so usually what I do is I'll have like some water in a bottle here and I'll squeeze some of that in and I'll try to see if the if the clog is in here and see if it'll if it'll you know suck the paint out if it's still not going through the airbrush that means there's a big clog in here and it's not working out so at this point I'll have you know I'll take this under the uh, the faucet I'll rinse it out and I have some tools to go in here and fish out whatever clogging's in here. And while you're there, might as well clean the whole thing with some of these uh, little brushes. And then once you're done, I'll go ahead and put some water in here and test to make sure that the water's coming out. And if it is, that means you've uh, you know cleared out the clog that's uh, back here. So. To clear out a bottle right you don't know if it's coming out or not um, first of all uh, for bottles like this you want to make sure that uh, this particular um, breather hole is not clogged because then if it is when you're trying to siphon up some some paint there's no air flowing through it so it'll create kind of like a like back pressure I guess um, and it won't allow the paint to move up so you want to make sure that this is unclogged first uh, and then that you should your paint should be able to move uh, if it's not moving double check your bottle maybe it's been sitting there for a while and your paints kind of thick 
if it is now you know that the paint's kind of thick you got to water it down and try it that way if you're still having an issue then that means that the that means that the uh, a, a clog of paint is stuck in, in this little straw here or in here usually what I do to uh, to clear a bottle out is first I clean this this area over here I'll take my my cap put it on there and I'm gonna back pressure it and if there's a clog in here it'll show up on the shirt so that's one way to try to see if there's anything in there um, and then after that I do that I'll take like a see here you can take like your you know your bottle of, of cleaner open it up real quick you can put this in here Let's see we try to clean it out using the, uh, the stuff that you have in here or you can use a smaller bottle or you can use a uh, you know like another smaller little bottle that that only has like cleaner solution in here and you can use it just to clean out your caps so that's another way of doing it if the you know if you're still having an issue with like stuff getting siphoned through here you may have to disassemble this uh, and uh, try to fish out and clean out um, the cap with something like this to see if there's anything in there you know you take out the, uh, the straw here and try to fish out whatever's in there uh, and that's the way you do it take that in there put this back and some people just leave your you know they leave their cup like that I usually take a, uh, a toothpick and cover that hole I want my paint to last a little bit longer and also when I shake it and uh, trying to mix it, the paint doesn't go all over the place. So that's normally what I do there. So um, after I use my airbrush, usually what I try to do is I clean it out with, um, with some solution. And either I'll leave the solution stuck in there and just leave it if I'm gonna use it uh, later on, like next, the next day. Um, or you can leave it out. Uh, normally, you know, people recommend for you to disassemble the airbrush and clean it out, you know, each part and keep it nice and clean, which you should do. But if you are kind of using it kind of daily or every other day, you can kind of, uh, you know, just make sure it's clean through and, and you're good to go. Just, um, you know, you can pick it up later on during the week. Uh, sometimes if you do that, um, you'll find out that uh, some of the there's a little cavity in here some of that uh, paint or whatever if, if it's not cleaned uh, thoroughly it'll stick onto the the needle itself so if I take this out and run my fingers across here you'll feel that there's like a little like paint caked onto the uh, needle and uh, that may cause an issue later on down the road as well uh, sometimes the the when you know when you're airbrushing uh, the the trigger gets stuck so it'll get stuck and then you'll run you know your airbrush and it'll be like you know a line that you don't want in there and that's because that got stuck and the reason is is because there's paint on the uh, the needle itself and the, the way to clean that is um, my art teacher taught me this, so either you can sand it off or you can use a scotch pad to clean that area. Also, if you notice that your, uh, your lines are very like, they're not very thin, they're very like sporadic or they're very like flared out for some reason, 
that means you probably have paint right on the tip so you want to make sure you clean that and this is kind of like a quick way from for uh, for you to clean that and just go up like that clean it and then I'll drop it back in here and continue our brushing So obviously with these methods, eventually, you know, you're gonna have to replace the needle and stuff like that. But down the line, I've never had an issue where I, you know, you know, the uh, the needle gets ruined because I'm, I'm cleaning it with, uh, with the scotch bright. So that'll never happen. Um, let's see, what else? Um, as far as clogging, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I can't think of anything else other than the quality of the paint, like I said. So first of all, your paint, uh, if it's new, it shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't have an issue with it, but uh, you don't know how old the paint is or how long it's been sitting in someone's garage and, uh, or, you know, warehouse or whatever. So uh, it's a good idea sometimes if you, you are having an issue with a particular color that you find it's constantly getting clogged, constantly, constantly, you're just using it all the time and that particular color always gives you an issue. That means there's like, you know, dry particles uh, in your bottle. So what you wanna do is get yourself uh, some filters like this. Um, this is Elite Paint Strainer System. This is like uh, mainly used for automotive uh, and you can find these in any automotive uh, store that, you know, sells paint and stuff like that. So this is a, uh, they have different varieties and just I just happened to get this coarse one, the 260 microns. Uh, it's good enough uh, for these kind of thick paints uh, and, uh, and it works really good. I never had an issue with these and I think it's only like $15 for a, for a large bag of them and uh, you know they'll last you for, for a long time because you're not filtering out your paints every time you use it. Unlike automotive uh, painters, every time they spray a car or they're using their gun, they will be using this every single time. So one way to find out uh, if your airbrush is a little bit dirty or you may be getting something stuck inside your uh, airbrush that's clogging it is if you're airbrushing and uh, let me see here and you're you're airbrushing trying to you're trying to do a straight line right and you're airbrushing and it starts doing this that means there's an issue uh, with it being clogged and uh, you know obviously if you have like you're trying to do a straight line and you have like very thin but then very thick thick lines and flare outs that, that are all very choppy like this there's an issue with the airbrush the tip the inside or there's a, a you know clock in um, a big clog in here or your paint itself is too thick um, that will definitely cause uh, clogging as well uh, also if you're using too much of a higher compression uh, for your air it tends to dry out the paint right at the tip so you'll find out that you have to clean the tip a lot constantly if you're using high pressure so uh, normally it's recommended to use you know low pressure like 35 and stuff uh, I use like 40 40 and change uh, but you know if you're using more than that uh, that'll definitely dry out the tip here and the, the way you, you can quickly uh, clean this tip here is you can use your your nails so make sure you don't stab yourself uh, or I have a old toothbrush that will just come in here clean the top the bottom and that's it If you find yourself where you're trying to airbrush, like let's say from a, uh, a little cup and you're airbrushing and there's bubbles coming out while you, you're pushing the air, not even pulling it by just pushing air and there's bubbles coming out. Um, obviously the more extreme the bubbles, the more clogged there is. And usually what happens is, well, first of all, so it has nothing to do with the paint actually there's I don't know if you guys can see this but if you can see there's one which is the, the tip and then around it there's like a crown that, that has an opening if um, you're getting bubbles 
is because there's paint there's paint around this little section this little tiny tip right and there's another little hole right here usually the air comes around the sides and sucks the paint from that little the little hole so if there's crust all the way around what it's gonna do is gonna push air back through the back and get air through here another possibility is that these little guys are uh, probably clogged or you have a lot of paint or you have a lot of paint in here I don't know if I can you can see that but see these little holes right here that's where the air kind of pushes through and sucks it through the through the center but if there's paint around here it's gonna try to push and backfire air through the inside So normally it's, you know, if there's a lot of paint around here, it's going to try to push air back in there. So that's usually what happens at that point. If that really happens and you can't get it to uh, get it uh, to shoot properly, you might want to disassemble, uh, disassemble it and uh, just, you know, give it a quick bath uh, with a uh, 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 ultrasonic uh, machine or something like that uh, to give it a good uh, rinse. If you're getting bubbles through between the body and the cap here in between that means your o-ring is kind of going bad or you need to kind of even more of a of a twist and, and pressure to make it to seal it there's a little tool that you can use to seal it but in this case it's not necessary because my o-ring is is good in there and uh, you can see there's an o-ring on there and uh, if it's going bad it'll start leaking air and you'll get a little bit of bubble or pain coming out through here um, but that's kind of rare sometimes when I do all of these uh, you know troubleshooting and I can't I know there's a clog in there and I can't get it out for whatever reason even if I back pressure it usually what I'll do is you know if this doesn't work either right I'm trying to clean it out and there's something in there I'm, I take my bottle this is a squeeze bottle and I'll take it and I'll put it in here and I'll, I'll squeeze it and using the the pressure of my hand and squeezing the bottle giving it like hard pressure usually blows out whatever's in there so uh, if it's not that means it's really either really uh, dry in there or you have a bigger problem which is a big big clock that you need to actually um, use one of these uh, tools and try to you know get it out or disassemble the whole thing and uh and clean it out normally that that happens if for whatever reason you forgot to uh you know to clean it at the end and there was a little bit of paint there and you come to use it the next day and you go on and and, and push the paint that was dry around it inside and it just makes its way in there so um you know always try to clean it or use some sort of uh uh, cleaner. I use uh, this stuff called uh, awesome. Let me show you So I usually use this stuff. I mean it works pretty good uh, for a lot of things and I've been using it uh, For like cleaning the car and cleaning the, the house and stuff like that. It's fairly cheap and it works pretty good You just gotta water it down um, Like I don't know like two three dollars at the uh, discount store um, Same company makes like window cleaning some people back in the day used to use uh uh, Windex. I don't know if they still do that. Um, you can also buy like, a, like you know, airbrush cleaner and stuff like that um, to help you out if you're afraid of that stuff. Um, you know, regular water will definitely work. Uh, just depending on you know, if you're using like acrylic paints, definitely that stuff will definitely work. Obviously, if you're using more like enamel paints and stuff like that, uh, you need like uh, more of the harsh stuff, which is like mineral spirits or. Uh, thinner and stuff like that so that's a uh, totally different uh, uh, media because the majority of you guys are probably gonna be using uh, water-based uh, paints and uh, pretty much all the paints that are out there 
their acrylic base. So this is what the uh, the brand looks like. Um, there are other types of acrylic paints. Uh, these are more for like you know you're using a regular brush. You guys would probably have seen these uh, out there. You can use these if that's if this is all you have and you want to try it. Uh, the only thing I recommend is for you guys to water it down. Um, you know, just using regular water for now. Uh, trying to make it look like uh, like kind of like a milky substance. If you get that uh, the consistency of milk, uh, you should be good to, uh, to shoot it through the airbrush. And that goes for just about anything that uh, is paint related or you want to shoot through it. Uh, even if you're just using the airbrush for food or, or cake and stuff like that and you want to spray something, as long as it has that milky consistency, you'll be able to shoot through it. Uh, so you can probably, you know, if you're using icing or whatever or uh, like I don't know what you guys use that that icing you water it down put a couple of drops of the uh, food coloring and make yourself a little bottle you should be able to shoot that through the airbrush without a without a problem so most people are airbrushing you know in private in their studio or you know if, even if you're airbrushing outside or in an event normally you're kind of far away from people you can clear out your stuff and um, you know don't have to worry about like anybody getting sprayed or uh, anybody getting a like allergic reaction to some of the products that you're using and stuff like that but if you are using like or you're working on custom nails uh, you want to make sure that your customer is using a mask because normally when you use uh, your airbrushing nails you're using some sort of enamel paint uh, and you want to make sure that uh, your customer is wearing a mask as well as you are uh, when you're you know working with the airbrush and try to clean it out clean clean it out or while you're working on it on your nails and stuff like that so that's uh probably the only thing I can think of as far as beauty sometimes you don't have a clog but the issue that you may be having is you press down on the airbrush and there's water or moisture coming out already without you even pulling this trigger so normally that means that there's moisture in the line that means your compressor needs to be uh, uh, drained there's probably liquid in there and that's probably what's happening also when you're working really close and you get some some spider you know webs or explosions again that means that there's you know moisture in the line you want to make sure you disassemble everything drain your uh, compressor and uh, go from there so for gravity fed airbrushes um, you gotta when you if you ever do like a back pressure make sure the cup is clean and there's nothing in there uh, as far as paint because once you uh, once you do that you're gonna have like paint coming out or if you're shooting like this and trying to do that you're gonna have paint uh, you know going straight into your face so just be careful with that uh, do it sideways or do it away from your face uh, this way you don't you don't have you know you don't get paint all over your face so um, this is why I really like uh, bottom feed or fed airbrushes because I can quickly you know change you know from one one cup to the other one clear it out real quick I don't have to worry about um, there's a cup up here like this and you got pain you want to change pains you got to come in here and clean this cup out that's going to take you a long time and um, you know for us if you want to work fairly quickly and have fun while airbrushing and you don't get frustrated um, I recommend for you to get a gravity uh, feed airbrush um, so this is kind of like a classic Wada Eclipse uh, the majority of the people start off with uh, I started off using this one and uh, it's been working good so far so I really like it um, I just had to like I said change a couple parts maybe change the uh, the needle because it tends to round off and then also uh, this little crown right here tends to tends to open up with time it's very thin and it, it tends to you know tends to open up like this so more of the needle is going to come out more uh, and you're going to have like a like bigger 
um, bigger lines when you airbrush. It's not going to be as clean. So at that point, um, you know, invest in getting a new uh, cap here and a, and a new needle. And that's pretty much it. Like most of these parts, like they'll last forever. You know, I think the only time I've had an issue with parts getting like old is getting this little guy cracked, which probably lasted like 10 years. And then this as well, there's a little thing right here that broke after 10 years, 10 feet. Yeah, about 12, more than that, like 12 years, I think so. I mean, they'll last for a long time. So uh, and that's pretty much it. As far as working with makeup, I'm not really sure what kind of issues you may run into because uh, I never actually, you know, done makeup or anything like that. So I don't know if those paints uh, last a long time or, you know, they clog up the airbrush a lot. I'm not really sure. So you might want to find another video uh, specifically for makeup and see if they have any additional tips. Uh, but overall, that's pretty much it. You know, usually you get debris or um, the paint is kind of old. Or for example, if you are using like metallics, um, metallic paint sometimes is is difficult to uh, to shoot it sometimes because because you know you have the little particles in there and they tend to uh, kind of you know clog together or join together and kind of you know it creates a, another clog in there and it's kind of hard to shoot. So uh, for metallics and stuff like that, I usually try to shake it. Um, uh, for a long time this way I get all the stuff you know all the stuff in there like nice and mixed and this way I don't have any issues with the um, with, with that paint so so if you are using Audubon sealer which is what I use to uh, paint on plastics um, and or you're using this uh, UV LS clear I recommend you definitely try to clean your airbrush as much as you can uh, this way because if any of this stuff dries in there it's very difficult to unclog it's a very hard stuff uh, it's still water based so it's not to uh, reduce with water but uh, it's, it's pretty strong stuff you know <sighs> even me trying to open up this cap right here like there's like some of this autoborn sealer has dried around the cap and the bottom here it's very difficult you can see there to uh to open you know it dries everywhere yeah. so just make sure you uh clean your airbrush after that because otherwise you know you'll get some clogs in there so um of course if you have some of this stuff uh inside your bottle too you may find yourself having a little bit of a clog um, because they tend to dry if anything if any air gets in there and that this stuff dries before the paint you'll definitely end up with with the clog so uh, just make sure if you are gonna mix it to um, you know use it use it all or uh, or just try to cap it as like this and or bag it this way it doesn't dry on you well guys that's gonna be it for this video hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this and you learned a little bit on how to unclog your airbrush um, the quicker that you learn how to do it and troubleshoot it uh, the better it's gonna be for you because you're not gonna get frustrated so um, try to see how quickly you can solve that problem and continue airbrushing just try to do that don't get frustrated I know it's gonna be kind of hard to try to solve where the the issue is coming from is it from here or from here from your your little cup just uh, try to, you know, clear it out with this. If that doesn't work, back pressure it. If that doesn't work, see if there's anything in there. If that doesn't work, you're trying it again. Remember, real quick, open this, take this out, clean this real quick. Boom, there. Boom, put this back together real quick shoot it again maybe back pressure it again maybe something got loose there you go it works all right let's continue painting let's go let's go just real quick yeah 
All right. So hopefully you guys learned something, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Take it easy for now. Bye-bye.